hand in hand with his idiocy. His emotions must rule his brain. He must be a warlike creature who gives battle to everything around him, even himself. Some wildlife researchers believe that chimps do not fight to protect food sources, but rather for reasons of domination, much like humans. It's true that chimpanzees uh, are, are violent. Uh, they engage in, in, in warlike uh, behavior, uh, but that's true of humans. It is a cultural artifact of, of these particular species. Chimpanzees are thought to be between five to ten times stronger than the average human male. And according to this former handler, they are unpredictable. Chimps are the dangerous animals to go with. And they are the sweetest, you know, that's the worst part. They, they are so lovey-dovey that you just want to be with them. The problem is when they grow and when the chimps realize how strong they are. Chimps often target the hands, face, and genitals, likely intended to disable and intimidate rather than kill the opponent. Bill Fields is a great ape researcher who has also had some close calls. One in particular involved a chimp named Peace K, who actually saved Bill from a violent attack by another group of chimps. And they screamed at me, letting me know they were about to attack and coordinate their attack. Fields was apparently spending too much time and attention on one group of chimps, likely making another group jealous. And Peace K stepped in, uh, took my side. Fields and Peace K directly challenged the oncoming chimps, and the attackers broke off the assault. But why do chimps attack? Experts say that, as with humans, the reasons vary. If you force the baby because you're stronger, then when the baby grows up, the baby will force you to do what uh, it wants. And they defend their territory. And part of defending their territory is defending the resources. They fight because the males are concerned that if these other males get to the females, they will probably kill the offspring. The reality is, apes and people are much more alike than even scientists expected. Evenoff was right on at least one count. Chimpanzees are almost 99% genetically identical to man and would be the best animal to try to breed with humans. Experts believe that man evolved from the same evolutionary branch as chimpanzees. Gorillas and orangutans evolved along a different branch, making interbreeding between chimps and people the most likely. Evenoff obviously gave some thought to what the offspring would look like as he made these crude composite renderings, the human face morphing into the head of an ape. So with an ape donor, Ivanov's work continued amid a climate of change. There was a sense that the Russian military was backward, and it's in 1927 that Stalin decides that they have got to make a concerted effort to rebuild dramatically expand and develop their military machine. So the idea of biological engineering and some sort of Superman, I mean this in a way is the answer to a country that is suffering from one disaster after another. Perhaps Ivanov also knew of Zema. She was, after all, alive during the early part of his career in the late 1800s. Ivanov would have been troubled with the same questions we have today. Was Anna just a hairy wild woman, an ape-human hybrid made in the wild, or an unknown ape species that locals called the Almasty? New DNA tests could reveal the answer. Kurt Nelson at the University of Minnesota is intent on identifying the DNA from Zana's son, Quit. Now I'm going to score the tooth with a Dremel tool. Okay, I've got my three samples here. The first one is the drill powder from the Dremel tool. And these two are the smashed tooth divided up into two samples. And one of them, I've added the human cells that I have to act as a positive control. I should get DNA in that one if the chemistry works. 
I've designed some primers that amplify DNA that is different in humans and chimpanzees. So I think that if an Almasty is a real creature that has DNA that maybe is intermediate between chimpanzees and humans, that I could see that difference using these primers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the mitochondrial DNA and determine whether or not the sequence is human. Mitochondrial DNA is inherited exclusively from the mother, so the mitochondrial DNA from Quit which should be the same as that of Zena, his mother. In Mexico, Danny Ramos has little concern about his condition or where it came from. I don't know anything about this problem that I have. The only thing I know is that it was inherited from an uncle. Over the years, he has tried to satisfy curiosity seekers, as well as those who wanted to test his hair and blood to see if he actually was an ape man. But in his heart, Danny has always known the truth. I am different only because of the hair. Inside, I am a normal person. Whether I fall in love or don't fall in love, I have a heart. I have a heart. The only difference is my hair. Many people have asked why he does not just shave his face, but he refuses. He says, this is who I am. To silence those who still believe he is less than human, Monster Quest has DNA tested a sample of Danny's hair. He is 100% human. Danny's condition is not the result of hybridization. One view of hypertrichosis is that it's a type of atavism. Atavism means evolutionary throwback, and um, atavism is one of the pieces of evidence for evolution. There are humans that have tails that are clipped off at the hospital, but, you know, that, that's considered to be an atavistic trait because the ancestors of the apes had tails. While Danny's appearance can easily be explained, how do you explain other mystery ape sightings? Well, I think there's no doubt that there are uh, undiscovered species in every corner of the planet. Long before Ivanov and Zeno, Another man was speculating on our evolutionary past. In 1859, Charles Darwin and others set the stage for scientific debate about human evolution and natural selection. He did a fantastic job of getting his arms around evolution. Philip Regal is a professor of evolution at the University of Minnesota. We know natural selection works, okay? We know genetic drift can play a role. We know sexual selection can uh, play a role. We know chromosomal rearrangements can play a role. Finding out how they all fit together, though, is controversial. While knowledge of man's evolutionary tree is still incomplete, experts say the Tumai fossil found in Chad in 2001 exhibits human-like skeletal features indicative of an upright posture. Tumai is considered a human ancestor and appeared after the split from chimpanzees about seven and a half million years ago. However, a recent study from the Broad Institute in Cambridge, Massachusetts now suggests that pre-human hominids and chimp species may have interbred for approximately another two million years before diverging again for good, approximately five and a half million years ago. If we had interbred with chimpanzees or gorillas, that wouldn't shock me. It would have been possible because the early ape and man species had not diverged as much as they have today. As evidence to support this theory, non-human primates do interbreed. There are um, baboons and macaques that have been interbred and hybrids in nature and in the laboratory, monkeys. Um, there are supposedly hybrids between chimpanzees and bonobos. Bonobos are the free love apes. They engage in sexual activity all the time. Sexual expression is just another form of communication. And it is not unheard of for apes to become attracted to humans. Like this dramatic scene played out in the 1933 movie, King Kong.
But most researchers shy away from the interbreeding theory. Even in the field of cryptozoology, the study of cryptids or legendary animals, which include creatures like the Russian Almasti, Asian Yeti, and American Bigfoot, or Sasquatch. The most commonly held theory is that these creatures are unique species of ancient ape, not man, and have somehow been able to delay extinction by remaining undetected by their most likely enemy, humans. Gigantopithecus is cited as the most likely ancestor, a massive ape 11 to 15 feet tall that lived alongside man only a few hundred thousand years ago. This giant lived throughout Asia and some believe even made it to North America over early land bridges. Well, there's about 2,000 or so tribes throughout the United States, the continental United States, and of those, there's probably 1,800 that have traditional stories that describe an animal that is the hairy man. To many, the thought of a large undiscovered primate today is fiction, but according to this expert, it is more than likely. In a place like North America where a lot of research has been done and where the total diversity is less than in, say, the tropical rainforests or the deep sea ocean trenches, I think we're going to have less uh, species uh, discoveries, new species discoveries, than in these tropical regions. But I'm pretty convinced that we will continue to find new species. Dr. Russell Mittermeier is a primatologist and the president of Conservation International. According to Mittermeier, 38 species of monkeys have been discovered worldwide since 1980. So a large, undiscovered primate is a possibility. The whole business of the Yeti and the Sasquatch or Bigfoot is, it's very interesting and I'm, I'm someone who uh, believes to some extent in the possible existence of these creatures. Another theory that's been put forward is that these creatures are people with hypertrichosis who have become social outcasts relegated to life in the woods. Phil Regal says that is unlikely. If it was an atavism, you'd expect one character. You wouldn't expect long legs, um, hairy body, prognathicism, not being able to speak, that sort of thing. That's an awful lot of characters for an atavism. It's, it's more like a distinct species. Mm -hmm. Even off new interbreeding between similar animals was possible. Early in his career, he bred several hybrids that did not exist in the wild. From the antelope cow to a mouse rat and guinea pig rabbit, this image is of the animal he called the Z-Dog, a zebra donkey cross. A viable ape-man cross wasn't a big leap for Ivanov's way of thinking. So when the chimps failed to become pregnant, he arranged for the artificial insemination of women volunteers with the sperm of Tarzan, the orangutan male. But it is interesting that there are so many scientists who supported the experiments even, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the experiments on the insemination of women. Motivation of women who would decide voluntarily to take part in the experiments should be scientific in a sense. They should uh, feel, understand that they help science. It was difficult to find such women, but in 1928, a volunteer came to him. She was a woman from Leningrad, cited only as G. Dear Professor, with my private life in ruins, I don't see any sense in my further existence. But when I think that I could do a service for science, I feel enough courage to contact you. I beg you, don't 